groovy. We are joined by the Belmont Bruins. Certainly we have Jacoby Gillespie, preseason first team all-conference Kate Tyson, and head coach Casey Alexander. Coach, we'll ask you to make an opening statement. We do have media here in the room and also on Zoom. Coach Alexander. Well, great to be here. Good to see everybody and um, love being in St. Louis. Um, as everybody is, I, I, we're really excited about our team. Um, <clears throat> we're young, which is never a great thing, uh, but uh, especially with so much COVID uh, eligibility still out there. But I do like the makeup of our team. A lot of, a lot of young talent. Um, I think especially good on the offensive end of the floor right now. Um, the key to our success this season will be uh, <clears throat> how well we do on the other end of the floor. Uh, can we be um, equally as good on the defensive end and hold our own there? We're, we're much more positioned, much better positioned to be relevant in the league, I think, than we were a year ago. I think the, just the year of experience will serve us extremely well. We learned a lot about the league. Um, have great, we had great respect coming in, but even more so now. Uh, love, love the tradition-rich programs in this league and the venues and the fans and, and, and the high level of coaching and talent. And so I'm um, really excited about year two for us. Yeah, Thanks, Kate. Coach. We'll go. Nope, go right ahead. Yeah, Casey, you mentioned there that you learned a lot you know, in year one of playing in the Valley. Can you just talk about what it was that you learned and how that can help you guys going into year two? Yeah, a lot of that is just kind of what you're used to and how it compares to the Valley. It's not, uh, you know, we, we come from, came from a league that had a different style, uh, and this league is much more defensive-minded. Uh, a lot of coaches in this league emphasize that end of the floor first. Naturally, it's a, it's a really good league, but the, the size, the physicality, the way the game is officiated, that we had learning curves for all of those things, and it took us a while to really kind of understand that, grasp it, and be able to play through some of those things. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I wouldn't say the makeup of our team is significantly different, but I think the, our understanding of what it takes to win in this league, uh, it, we're, we're much farther along at this point in time than we were last year. And then for Jacoby and Cade, whichever, or for both of you, really, can you just talk about you know, playing with a guy like Ben Shepard, first round NBA pick, can you just talk about what you can learn from a guy like that and how you guys can, you know, I guess, take that into your own experience? We'll go to whichever. Go ahead. Okay, if you want to. Yeah, I mean, Ben's a great player, and uh, we lost a big piece uh, when he went to the draft, but, you know, we're more than proud of him. Um, the I know the one thing I took away is uh, his leadership. Maybe he wasn't the most vocal guy, but he just led by example. By being in the gym, and when he was in the gym, he was, he was, um, you know, you could, ju you just knew he was the leader just because of how he played on the court and how he went about his work. Like Kate said, he was a great player, and we hate to lose him, but he showed us a lot. He was like a role model to me. He, he always did everything right, and he was always working hard. So, our next question will come from Zoom. Good afternoon, Coach. John Seitel from HoopsHD.com. If I'm reading your roster page correctly, no juniors, one senior, and one grad student. I was curious, is this the youngest roster you've ever coached, and does that make your life a little or a lot harder? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's the youngest I've coached or not. It's hard to get too much younger. Uh, two seniors, no juniors. Um, you know, but, but at the same time, I think we have some pretty good experience uh, in our locker room. Um, you know, the, the two seniors have played a ton of basketball, started a lot of games, had a lot of individual and team success. And then uh, along with these two guys um, who, although freshmen last year, enjoyed a lot of minutes and, and um, a lot of and, uh, individual success uh, as well. And so I, I'm confident. I'm not so worried about it um, as far as uh, just our talent level or our depth. I'm not, those things don't concern me as much. It's more... Um, you know, Belmont's always had great success because of the longevity of the players in, in the locker room and on the roster, and, and we're missing that. And so it'll, it'll take some time to, for this team to figure out who it is um, without kind of the traditional core leadership that we've always enjoyed. Coach, with Ben Shepard moving on to the NBA, how do you replace a guy like that, both in terms of on-court production and off-court leadership? Yeah, not easily. You know, you don't lose a first-round pick. Um, and replace them and act like it's not difficult to replace. And I think Ben's, you know, Ben, as, as these guys mentioned, he, he had remarkable consistency, not just from game to game, but literally daily. I mean, he played with great energy. Uh, he was always healthy. He was always available. Um, he was always a great teammate. 
Uh, and those things are, you know, those things are really important in the, within to the dynamics of a team. And so uh, that will be hard to replace. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about that. And then and he was so good on both ends of the floor. That, that's really where we'll miss him the most. He was our leading scorer, and he was a first-team all-conference guy. Uh, but he guarded the best player on the other team, for, perimeter player, for three consecutive years. I played a ton of minutes, um, really put our team on his back last year and performed mightily doing that. And so it's a challenge, to say the least. Our next question comes from Zoom. Yeah, hey, uh, for both Kate and Jacoby, uh, I'll just ask you this. What did you learn about your games last year as freshmen at the college level, and what's the biggest thing you both worked on this off season? to try to take your game to the next level? Um, I'd say the main thing I learned from being in the Missouri Valley last year is just how physical the game is, um, how physical the game can get, and that strength helps you tremendously. So I've been working on that a lot. Um, and I think the main thing I've been working on this offseason has been um, just playing lower on both ends of the floor. Uh, it gives me l more leverage in any kind of quickness move or you know jab step or just beating a defender to a to a spot, so. Uh, the main thing I learned was just how all the little things matter in the games. Uh, and I'm, I worked on shooting and also stepping up on the defense end so I can guard like uh, all the guards and stuff. And if I can get in with Casey real quick. Uh, Casey, you talk about the physicality of the league and you say, you know, the roster is relatively the same, but do you feel like you added significant physicality with like a guy like Dia or Brigham Rogers in your freshman class. Do you feel like you added that in what you recruited this offseason? I do think we addressed the need. I don't know if we got ourselves completely over the hump or not. But uh, uh, like I said, that's not going to be a quick fix for us. But, but I, again, I like the makeup of our team. I, I don't really feel like we're missing anything significantly. I think it was more a measure of just um, accommodate, uh, get, getting ourselves accommodated with, with how the game is played in this league, more so than lack of pieces. So. Um, I'm excited to see where we are to answer your question. We'll go to Kevin next. Uh, Kevin Lehman from Valley Television. Uh, Casey, question for you. We talked about the loss of Ben Shepard. Also, you, you, know, you had uh, Freiburg, a great three-point shooter, as a four-man. Bronze moves on. Who should we look for to fill those spots? in that front line for you this season? Yeah, we lost three starters. Uh, and, and we've graduated 10 guys in the last two years. And then you throw a transfer or two in there as well. We've had, we've had the same kind of roster overhaul that a lot of teams have had. But, but because we've graduated 10 guys uh, that have left Belmont. And that's, um, you know, I, I do think that we have pieces. Jace Willingham's a sixth year guy, Division II transfer, that'll step in. And his experience will be very important for us. Malik Dia and Brigham Rogers, um, I think, are two five men that can hold their own in this league. I think they're both very good players. And so those those pieces will be replaced there. It'll be more up to these guys to replace Ben Shepard and, and what he did. You know, I think Jacoby will definitely inherit a lot of the responsibilities that Ben had on the defensive end, especially. Um, I think we'll have really good offensive balance. I think these two guys are very good offensive players, but we'll have you know, multiple guys on the floor that can play um, on that end. And it'll be – on that end for us, it's always how well we play together. You know, do we share the ball? Are we playing clean, as I like to say? Are we smooth offensively? And um, I'm pretty confident that we'll, you know, we'll look like a Belmont team looks on that end of the floor. Our next question comes from Zoom. All right. I, um, did I do it, Casey? Did I unmute well enough? Can you hear me? I got you, Joe. <laughs> hey, so you mentioned Brigham. Uh, uh, what other freshmen, and I assume he's going to contribute, other freshmen going to contribute to, to this team? And can you tell us which ones? We have four freshmen, and I think all of them are going to be good players for Belmont. Uh, as, as everybody knows, freshmen accelerate at different levels, and some of that's physical, some of it, and most of it is mental. But, uh, but I honestly expect all of them to have very good careers. We've had a, we, two of the four have had a lot of injuries this preseason, so they're – their growth uh, has been a little slower, um, but I would expect for Wynn Miller, I would expect for um, Sam Orm and Brigham Rogers to be, you know, in the mix and playing in every game. We have another question from Zoom. 
Hey, Coach. Um, looking at this year in the backcourt specifically with a presumably more healthy Keyshawn Davidson, what are you looking for out of the backcourt tandem with Jacoby and Keyshawn this year with the second year in the Valley? Yeah, Key's, Key's definitely more healthy. He had a complete labrum tear, tear three days before our first game last year, so he's recovered from that offseason surgery and excited about that. You're talking about a guy in Keyshawn that started over 100 college basketball games at the Division One level and is a real steadying force for our team. I think he and he and Kobe are very different uh, in the, what their greatest strengths are, which I think is, is good. I think that versatility will serve us well. I like that both guys can play with the ball or without the ball um, and really make a good um, and dynamic guard combo for us. And the three of them combined, when you include Cade, I think makes our backcourt um, really, really good. I mean, the success of our team, especially early in the season, uh, will probably be determined by how well those guys uh, pick up where they left off. We have five minutes left in this segment, but are there any other questions? Hey, Sean, it's Russell, and you talked about, you know, the grind of the Valley. What was your favorite part of joining the Valley last year? You know, probably just the, just new venues, and, and, and I think the tradition, you can feel the tradition in this league everywhere that you go. You know, I mean, teams are going to um, ebb and flow as far as, you know, top of the league, middle of the league, bottom of the league, you know, the, um, but – but there was no doubt, um, and, and that culminated with the with the tournament here in St. Louis in Arch Madness. You, you, you have a we have a real respect for um, just the the history, um, the the support, the resources that are in this league. That, that's, those are all kind of different level scenarios for us that we're trying to uh, get ourselves acclimated with. Anything further for the Belmont Bruins? Gentlemen, thank you for your time today. Thanks very Thanks. much.